Blue tongue skinks are no doubt some super interesting animals. So it's no surprise they've become so popular in herpeticulture. But as it turns out, when you're keeping something as a pet, you need to feed it. If you have a grumpy, uh, maybe shy, right? You're just, you're just shy, you're not grumpy. But if you have a shy blue tongue skink like I do, you might be struggling to get it to eat like I was. But don't worry, Smog here is now eating like a champ. So let's talk about how I got this little sausage to start eating and how you might be able to get your skink at home to eat as well. To understand how to get an animal to eat, I wager that it's pretty important to understand the animal itself. So just looking at the structure of this animal, it's a potato. An animal that is shaped in this way is probably not chasing down prey at high speeds, at least not as its most common method of getting a meal. This and the fact that they are sort of generalist omnivores eating almost anything, this leads me to believe that mealtime for a blue tongue skink is much more a function of opportunity. Like I said, they can eat almost anything. This is probably because they're just bumbling along their terrain in their native habitat. Maybe you have an Australian, maybe you have an Indonesian blue tongue skink, but wherever they are, they're kind of cruising around looking for an opportunity to eat. For that reason, the diet of the blue tongue skink consists of things like vegetables and fruits, dark leafy greens, worms, larvae, roaches, things along those lines, eggs, and even carrion or decaying animal matter. Like I said, bumbling potatoes that move around on what look to be like halves of toothpicks, they take what they can get. So we've established that they are opportunistic eaters, but how does that help a keeper with a skink on hunger strike? Well, I'll tell you what worked for me and Smaug here at least. Throw the kitchen sink at it, okay? Feed it everything. Feed it your shoes, no. Pretty much anything you can feed a reptile anyway. Lucky for Smog and myself, I have a lot of reptiles. So that means I also have a lot of different variety of reptile food. So when he joined our family, we ran the gambit trying to get him to eat things. I'm talking bugs, nothing. Talking salads like greens and squash, nothing. Salad with bee pollen, because maybe you wanted something sweet. Nothing. Salad mixed up with bugs, so there's all kinds of different smells and even some movement going on in the salad. Nothing. So there go the usual suspects. I mean, out of that group of things, I could feed pretty much any other reptile in my reptile room. So, it was time to break out the big guns. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking wet dog food. This is a weird puppy. Look at my weird puppy. He is a weird little puppy. And I used a grain-free dog food. Now, grain-free does not automatically mean healthy, but grains, I don't know, to me, seem like, like he probably wouldn't want, you know, it's probably not good for him to need a plate of rice, right? So if they're shoving a bunch of like rice and wheat and whatnot into certain wet dog foods, I did not want to feed that to him. I used Blue Wilderness Blend. I think I used a puppy food actually. And it did have small chunks of potato in it, but I picked those out as well and had a plain old bowl of some wet dog food, because you're weird. Wet dog food is not a staple I want smoke to eat like every day or anything like that, but I have heard of blue tongue skinks eating things like this. I knew I was gonna try it at some point as a fun little treat for him, but I don't want it to be what, you know, I want him to eat whole foods like greens and whatnot and whole prey like insects to get him uh, more of a full nutritional profile with plenty of calcium and whatnot. But drastic times can call for drastic measures so I filled your food bowl up, didn't I? I popped it in his cage and I gave him some privacy. In the time between me giving him this food and coming back to check on him, something borderline magical happened. Well, he ate it and it, that made me very happy. I'm sure he was happy to get a little bit of food in his tum tum as well. Like I said, I don't want this to become a staple for him, but it did serve a very important purpose. Finally finding something that he would eat oh, really opened his eyes to the fact you're peeing all over me. Opened his eyes to the fact that I am not some scary monster or just like an inconvenient food delivery service. But hey, that's good enough for me. This crucial discovery on his part opened the door to him knowing where food would be and also helped him realize that in no way am I trying to trick or manipulate him. I really just wanted to give him some food. Since eating the dog food, we also tried scrambled eggs and Smog really likes scrambled eggs. We used chicken eggs 
quail eggs might be better. I mean, I don't, I really don't know the difference in like the nutritional profiles between a chicken egg and a quail egg, but quail eggs are something I might try for him in the future as well. But he really still didn't want to eat, like I said, whole foods, whole greens, whole vegetable. But to remedy this, I've added some Rapashi products to his diet. Some omnivore blends, namely Bluey Buffet, and pumpkin pie. And these fantastic little powders have served a dual purpose for Smog and myself. They do contain many, if not all, of the nutrients that Smog needs in his diet. I wouldn't completely replace everything else I feed him with just these powders, but I mean to add as a, as a supplement to their diet or in a pinch if they're not eating anything and they'll eat that, I mean, it's better than nothing, right? But it turns out that Smog will eat pretty much anything that has this, this nice, beautiful goop all over it, okay? That includes salads, and his favorite is definitely the pumpkin pie. I mean, he really goes crazy for that. The Bluey Buffet, you know, will kind of circle around and be like, meh, eh, you know, and then start slurping it up a little bit, but that pumpkin pie, mm -mm -mm. And now that Smog knows that I bring him food, his personality has really started to shift. I mean, like I said, he is shy. He really doesn't like me. He is a wild-caught animal, and uh, that... You know, he lived a lot of his life without interacting with people, and now he has to is forced to interact with me. So, so this uh, olive branch I extended to him in the form of dog food really kind of started developing our relationship, right? He doesn't panic when I walk in the room, even if he's out right next to the glass in his basking area. Uh, he used to just dart and get in some of the hides and the PVC tubes we have in his enclosure. Check this video out if you want to see why we have those in there. But yeah, he's much more calm. He knows that I'm not just trying to grab for him. I'm, I'm trying to give him something, you know, a little, little quid pro quo. So the steps that we've taken together have taken him from very, very nervous to now he's starting to become curious. And that makes me one happy ape. So if you have a blue tongue skink that won't eat run out, pick up some dog food, pick up some pumpkin pie. It might just get that party started. Hey, I really hope this video helps at least one person and their blue tongue skink out. And we hope you're enjoying the content on this channel. If you are, hey, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to Red Ribbon Reptiles. It helps us out a lot. And you got anything else to say, Smog? Well, I guess that does it. This is Smog, the Halmahera blue tongue skink in all of his glory. I am Raph. The hominid. You've been watching Red Ribbon Reptiles. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.